Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Andreas. Hello. Hi, Christian. Nice to meet you. Well, why don't, for folks that don't know who you are, why don't you tell us who you are, where you are, and what you do? Yeah. So, um, first of all, because I'm from Germany, my English is not the best, so I have to try to get it fluent, like the fluent UI. But um, I will try my best. So, um, my name is Andreas. I'm coming from Germany. I'm a freelancer for Microsoft 365 um, cloud services since many, many years. And my passion is um, the process management, digitize the processes in the um, corporations and um, bring the tools, Microsoft 365, to get the usage, the more, more usage for the tools, not only Word, Excel, PowerPoint. That's what I do. Well, there's no shortage of that kind of work. In fact, one of the most common questions, in fact, I just got an email this morning from a partner that's like, well, you know, how how can you help us do do more? So it's very much like that envisioning discussion. Help me see the potential of the technology and what's actually possible. And so what's how do you work with with clients as an independent? Like, what is your process with a client when they say something generic, like, come help us be more collaborative? So what do you actually do? Yeah, that's that's the starting point to say, OK, we, we come from the generic side. And then we, uh, I I look at the company, um, how they work, what are their processes? And then I tell them, well, you already bought Microsoft 365. So them fucking use it. Um, so um, not only Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So let us uh, take a look. What what are your processes and how can we engage the tools Microsoft you already bought by Microsoft? So how can we use it and make your processes smarter and more digital or more automated? And that's what I do. Um, I, I um, go in the companies, look what is your process? And then I have to understand, really have to understand how the process is. And then my my goal is to present a solution, how you could do that with tools from Microsoft 365, mostly in the standard, not premium, because you already have the standard. So this is our goal to get the maximum out of your license you already bought. That's always, uh, I know it's frustrating when Microsoft goes and talks about all these cool things and capabilities. And then when you look under the, there's always that first question is, well, how much is Where's this the with the standard tag? license? Right. Yeah. Like, do I need to go buy additional licensing for this? And so it's great to have an expert because you need to have, you know, deep experience with it to understand, okay, what Microsoft demonstrated at, at, at build or ignite. That was with the E5 licenses, and here's what you would have to go and do. But here's what you can go and do today. So it's great Absolutely. to have that discussion. Absolutely. Yeah, because um, the not every company will buy the E5 license. So right. um, mostly you have the E3 or something like that, or business premium. And they have a lot of stuff in this license, but they do not really know what they can do with it. And that's my my point to, to start in the companies and say, so let's let's have a look how we can uh, make your work smarter. Yeah, it was a lot of, uh, you know, so I was initially a, a SharePoint MVP and a lot of SharePoint discussions really started with, all right, you know how to log in, you know how to upload and check in and check out documents in the old versions of this. You know, at, but were you aware of, and so I did this set of presentations, which were really started to help customers understand basic features. Like, and I would say, well, here's 20 different things that you can do for productivity inside of SharePoint, working with the office suite uh, and start showing them. They'd be like, I know that one. I know that one. What is that? That would always surprise them. They're like, I had no idea that you could do this. It's like Excel. You know, most people scratch the surface 
of the capabilities of what Excel is. And when you understand what they're trying, the customer's actually trying to do, you say, let's go look at this whole other layer of features and capabilities. And they're just, the eyes get big. <laughs> they get very excited yeah, about that. Or in my case, um, that's a the good example. Uh, in my case, you have a customer who uses Excel for um, getting information in, in a structured way. And this Excel will be transformed um, to um, transfer to the next um, salesperson who has to to make other things with this Excel. So um, in my case, I will go to the person and say, okay, why do you make these structured information in the Excel? Because the other has to, to get it out of the Excel. Um, let us take a Microsoft Forms formula so you can get your structured information but in the end, we have a power automate who will present the data directly to your colleague who will need it in, a, in another way. So we do, we do not need another Excel. And this is the eye opener. If the um, understand what, what, what the difference is, not to focus on the tool you have um, to get more in a solution way. And that's what I do. Well, very I cool. I try hey. to do. It well, that's right. You try to do. Well, that's another thing I was going to ask you about is like, so how often do you run into resistance where customers are asking for your help? You're presenting to them, hey, here's the things that you can do. I mean, in my experience, I know others have run into this where then companies are resistant to that change, no matter how much they're asking for help. They then push back on your guidance and your advice. Yeah, you I know that. This is this is the hard part. Um, I in I think it's if they the customer doesn't see the benefit of the solution, he won't get it. So um, you, um, I try to to uh, push up the benefit they have if we uh, change the way they work now, and mostly um, it's successful what I do. So um, they are. If they um, transform the process and will make it the other way, it's a very, very fast return on investment. So, and that's um, the financial side. So, um, if you have a, a big ROI, so you will get it. Yeah, that's uh, isn't that true with everything? I, I, I'm a marketing guy, and you can spend endless dollars on marketing things, but if you're not working towards specific conversion activities and have the metrics in place so that you're seeing the business return, that ROI, then you, know, you just keep spending money and wonder where like, hey, this marketing stuff doesn't work. No, dumb marketing doesn't work. So yeah. like, it, it, it's exactly the same way. It's, it's great to go. It's like with any new deployment of technology and companies generally will go and turn on every feature. It's like, well, wait a second. Um, you, you go in and pilot this out and understand what are we actually trying to achieve and does this help us do it faster more comprehensively uh with more people involved are we more compliant are we uh you know delivering product and services faster i mean what are the metrics that drive your business and by moving forward this new plan does it help you do it more better more efficiently kind of all those measurements absolutely but uh, my goal is in the companies is not to get the only one big process to transform and change. Um, mostly the, the greatest impact are the small things you can tell the people who work, who make the everyday work. Like um, um, my, my um, favorite feature for using Power Automate at everybody is uh, the function in Microsoft Teams, remind me later. That's a yeah. very, very yeah. cool, small power automate flow. But if you, if you get the benefits for the user to, to have the possibility to remind you later from a chat or a, a channel message, everybody loves it. So, yeah. and about this way, the, the small things, but the big impact, that's what uh, I try to implement in the companies. That's very cool. So you, you, uh, how long have you had your MVP now? Uh, December 21. Okay, yeah, so you, so six months in. So uh, very exciting. Three. And yeah, oh, it's the third one in? No, oh. uh, three months. 
Oh, three months. December. Dece- oh, that's right. I'm, I, I, see, that's time is irrelevant in, in, anymore. It's like I sit in my basement. <laughs> is it light outside? I, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Is it still winter or do I, we have summer? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the dog barks. I go out, but I'm usually have headphones in. I'm either on a call or I'm listening to a podcast. I'm not really paying attention, which is a sad state. I don't know. I'm, I'm in this cocoon. So you, so you've had the MVP for three months. What was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, uh, how, how did like what? Yeah, what was your journey? How did you get here? Um, I have a, I'm um, very participating in the uh, Microsoft community in Germany, in LinkedIn, uh, and I know very, um, or many colleagues from the community and doing very much stuff in the community. So um, the uh, MVP, Alexander Eggers, uh, the team's MVP, uh, nominated me because he thought my work is good. And um, yeah, that was the starting point to to get uh, to try to get the MVP. But that's no, that's not right. I I always said uh, to everybody and especially to Alexander, I don't want to get or I, I don't want to get really MVP because I think it's a it's an award. It's it's special. So I don't want to to work or make all my work only to get MVP. So. Yeah. I said, okay, I, I will try that. And if it's enough, it's fine. If not, okay. So, uh, but uh, it should be enough. So uh, now I'm MVP and I'm very honest. Uh, it f- feels very, very good, but it's still a little bit overwhelmed uh, what with this MVP stuff all is uh, you have to manage and, and get and everything. But um, I will get the first MVP summit. I uh, I will get that. I just wish that it were in person and not virtual yeah. again. But uh, yeah, it's because uh, it, I, I think it's the best, it's the top benefit of being an MVP is that once a year, travel to Seattle, participate, meet the product teams, you know, yeah. the, the product owners across Microsoft, interact with fellow MVPs. I mean, you develop relationships that are just, I mean, this, and for being somebody that's been in collaboration technology most of my career, it's so difficult to build relationships without occasionally seeing actual faces. Like yeah. you need to have the human connections there. I mean, there's a lot that you can do. Like I was, uh, you know, I, uh, well, I, so I joined, I took my job almost 15 months ago. I had already known the executive team. I knew people for years and years and years. So it made it for a very easy transition. I kept talking, seeing all these other new hires and interacting with them and who had never been out, never been to headquarters, had never met all the other team members and how hard that must be to to connect. And it's certainly true with uh, with communities. I'm looking forward to things slowly opening back up and events that are starting to happen. And it's great to see. So hopefully we'll see you out. I know that we're doing a virtual this year. It's is it next week? Two weeks? It's in. I it's think coming up. I don't have it in my mind. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 coming up quick. But then uh, hopefully next year we'll be back to normal and uh, be doing things in person. So hopefully, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great benefit. But um, well, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's, it, your your path forward. I, I like uh, what you said about it, it's. And I've heard this from another MVPs, and I felt the same way too. I said, look, I'm doing the community activities and sharing of content ideas, not because I'm trying to achieve something that's out there. It's just, it's built into my DNA. It's part of yep. the way that I work. Uh, you know, the work out loud, transparent, what I do, sharing my knowledge and information. I mean, I remember I've been around long enough that uh, when I started in IT in the early nineties, it was still very much the idea that power and influence came from hoarding information, keeping yourself and being that go-to expert. And that was your job security. And it's completely flipped. Job security comes from who do we want to work with? Who's sharing, who is uh, motivating other people, encouraging people and experimenting and sharing the results of those experiments. That's what companies want 
That's the people I want to hang out with that are sharing information. Sure. So you have to be open-minded and, and uh, sharing is caring is um, one of my favorite um, um, hashtags in my, in my blog and in all the content, the stuff I, I share in, in the LinkedIn or of, on my blog. So um, absolutely, uh, community rocks and sharing is caring. These are my two um, hashtags I, I have in my DA, DNA. I just tweeted that out yesterday to somebody in response to something on Twitter. And I did the sharing is caring. Yeah, because I, I agree. It's, uh, yeah, you can tell a lot about a, a person. And one, one of the other things, and I'll put this out there for anybody that's watching this too, uh, MVPs are approachable. Uh, I've been told throughout my career, it's like, you know, Christian, you get a little intense. People don't feel comfortable like that they can approach you. It's like, we're at MVPs in general are very approachable. Like, so ask questions, reach out. If we don't know the answer, like, I don't know how you handle that. When you don't know the answer, what do you do? I ask my community and anybody knows it. Yeah. Anybody knows. Yeah. So that's, that's why it's like, People shouldn't be shy. Ask questions, get involved. It's it's all right to have a goal to become an MVP and understand what the process is, but the, it needs to be genuine. The, it needs to be authentic in the contributions and your 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 participation within the community. Because I know a lot of people that like to ride the coattails and aren't really contributed. They're there, they're active, but they're not really giving to the community uh, yeah, oh, okay. and, and, and so that's something that just like, be aware of, like you, you actually need to be in there contributing, building, doing something, not just existing within the community to be uh, yeah. considered. Yeah. So we here in Germany, uh, you know, that, uh, we have a very, very big uh, community here in, in, in Germany for Microsoft uh, stuff. And, uh, it's, um, like a big family. So everybody cares for the, for the other and um, so I don't, well, for me, um, I will ever um, share my knowledge um, and contribute for the community. So um, I think that will be the next year's my, my yeah. um, holy grail. Well, it's a, it's a great way to, to kind of organize yourself and, and to participate, you know, and, uh, yeah, and is to help other people. And I think that's that's how we're we're all going to until we get back to something more normal when we're able to travel and see each other in person. You know, I I think we all need to, you know, help each other a little bit more. Look for those opportunities to, uh, you know, to help others. I, I just I think we're hey I I'm a big believer that the true happiness comes through service, not through yeah. anything else. It's through service whether it's to your family, to your community, you know, whatever it is at some level. Uh, and, and so if you want to, you could be very unhappy, have a rough day and go out and do a service project. It will completely change uh, the way that your, your perspective for the day. And a lot of community activity is exactly like that. Um, so, uh, well, thank you for your time. It's been great to, to get to know you. Hopefully I will see you uh at one of these events i may actually be in your neck of the woods later this year uh so i'm, I'm coming over to europe for uh, in mid-year so in june and i may extend my trip and come down and with a goal of uh visiting france and potentially germany so i'll let everybody oh, cool. know i'll let people know what, it, what if, if it, that happens because i want to try and tap into and that's another great thing about you know mvp community like what else is going on? What user groups are happening? Can we put together like a, you know, drinks or dinner with people and just get together and uh, absolutely. So, so I'll let you know. I will. I will uh, try to follow. And uh, if I know where you are, maybe you are in the uh, near Germany, so we can met uh, meet us uh, at the community event. Well, you'll see it in my social streams, but I'll definitely reach out. So, Andreas, well, it was great getting to know you. Thank you so much for your time and. Uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for having me. Wow. Wow.